the rain? Are you there? Bill, can you hear me okay? Okay. Got a new setup, that's why I was wondering. Thanks. You actually sound a little muted. I can barely hear you, Bill. I got to try to turn this up. How's that? A little better? Yeah. Okay. I can still barely hear you, though. Huh. Hmm. Oh, I don't know why. Now I now I know I can hear you. Okay. That's still a little low. Huh. Let's see where is my mic? Where's my whoops? Where's my mic microphone setting? Kareen, do you know if we have our full group today? Heard from anybody not coming. Can you hear me? I can't hear you very well. Huh? It's not working. Second. I know one thing I can do. This will work. So we have our full group, Kareem. Nope, not here yet. So I'm gonna go to plan B here.
Hi, Maggie. Are you there? Hi, Corinne. Can you take my picture off your name? Uh, that looks really weird to have me twice. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't have a twin. <laughs> no, I, I tried for some reason I can't, but uh, no, I hear you. I hear you, but I tried. <laughs> It brightens everything up, Corinne, to see your smiling face twice. You are too kind. <laughs> can you guys hear me? Yes. Can you see everybody? I can only see one person at a time. Do you have the gallery view? I can't get gallery view for some reason. Oh, that's because what I'm doing is, is while we're, before the meeting starts, I'm projecting um, a pretty slide on channel 26. So uh, when, as soon as the beginning, the meeting begins, I'll release the oh, screen. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's fine. See, I just wasn't sure if I was messing up because <laughs> oh, no, you're good. You're I good. tried to put my Zoom on my PC and it wasn't working right. So I went back mm -hmm. to my iPad. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're good. Kind of hey, you look like a roll of sellotape and a calculator. That's what we can see. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I think I'm first um, in the list. So I just joined. Let me know if this is okay. Oh, sure. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. It's great to be okay. back. Back. Hey, hey, welcome know. back. Great to see you. <laughs> Very nice. You got a, you got a meeting off. Excused uh, absence. He got reappointed. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, to. This time for four years. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. Yeah, for, for quite a while. Um, I, I'm coming to you from uh, Florida at the moment, hence the uh, different scenery. I'm sorry, you have to be in Campbell to be on the planning commission video. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's Florida because you've got a gun in the background there, Adam. <laughs> that is actually a prop from a play. I'm staying in my in-laws place. That is the Red Rider BB gun from a production of uh, Christmas Story. <laughs> That's pretty funny. It is also very Florida appropriate. You Don't shoot your eye out. Exactly. You can't see it, but I'm actually surrounded by gators right now. I thought it might be used to settle any arguments that might occur. <laughs> So who are well, we I, for? I don't know because I can't see anybody, so I don't know <laughs> if we're all here what, or not. What's wrong with your computer? There we go. There we go. Okay, we're, we're uh, Andrew's there. We still only see your roll of um, scotch tape and your uh, fancy calculator. For me? <laughs> yeah, Michael, your camera must what be pointed that? at your desk. I think your iPad camera. You need to flip it to the front oh. face. Instead of <laughs> could have been embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. There we ah, go. Well done. There we go. Perfect. I think the other picture was better. 
<laughs> it was very old school, that's for sure. Yeah. I liked pink paper clip. So I think we're waiting for uh, Nick. And do we have another uh, new commissioner starting today? We do, but that's he'll right. start at the next meeting. He needs okay. a meeting first. Yeah, I was I was told that um, I I because I've been previously sworn in, I'm I'm okay. But, uh, we just you're, they you're just okay, made... Adam. <laughs> So I think we're just waiting for uh, Commissioner Colville. We'll give him a few minutes and then we'll have to start. You didn't hear from Nick, did you, Corrine, at all? No. Okay. Oh, we'll just wait one more minute and then we'll start it. Oh, there we go. He's arrived. You see Nick? Oh, there he is. He's connecting. He is. Oh, there he is. Made it. Everybody's there. Oh, President accounted for. All right. Okay. Well, let's call to order the uh, meeting of the Campbell Planning Commission for September 22nd, 2020. And before we start, I got to say that this Planning Commission meeting will be conducted via telecommunication and is compliant with provisions of the Brown Act and Executive Order N 29 20 issued by the governor. And Corrine, can we have a roll call, please? Okay. Uh, order, Commissioner Buckbinder. Present. Commissioner Ching. Present. Commissioner Colville. Present. Commissioner Rivlin. Here. Vice Chair Ostrowski. Here. And Chair Cray. Here. All present. So uh, have, has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes from our last meeting? Any corrections or anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. abstention? Aye. Oh, Adam, Aye. Uh, Commissioner Bookbinder abstains. He, he wasn't here. So the minutes are approved. Uh, at this point, uh, Director Kermoyan, do we have any communications for the commission or any agenda changes? Uh, Mr. Chair, there are none on both fronts. Okay, well, we'll move right into our first item on our agenda. Oh, I gotta say first, I don't know if, there, if there's anybody here to speak on an item not on the agenda, this is your chance to speak for up to five minutes. I didn't see anybody look like all applicants. Uh, but if anybody would like to speak on an item not on the agenda, this is your chance. Okay, seeing or hearing nobody, we'll close that and we will move to our regular agenda. Item number one is a public hearing to consider the appeal of Nitin Srivastava of the Community Development Director's mm -hmm. denial of a tree removal permit, PLN 2019-192 to remove one oak tree located in the rear yard of property located at 1698 Hyde Drive. Stack is, staff is recommending that this item be deemed stat statutorily exempt under CEQA. And our project planner is Naz Healy. Naz? Good evening, thank you. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Is everyone able to see my screen? 
Yes. Okay, Looks great. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So item one is the appeal of a tree removal permit denial for one oak tree located at 1698 Hyde Drive. The property is located at the corner of Hyde Drive and Pollard Road, and the oak tree is located at the rear corner of the property near the property line that's shared with the side and rear neighbors. The original request was to remove an oak tree due to proximity to the home and damage to a wood retaining wall and concrete walkway. The uh, community de development director determined that the required finding of structure damage had, had not been met as there were no signs of damage to the home and the wall and walkway is not a main structure. So the uh, permit was denied and the applicant subsequently appealed the decision. So with the appeal, the appellant has indicated another reason for removal is a lean towards the home. However, it, it is common for trees to develop a lean uh, to get more light. And this tree is located between a fence and a building wall. Um, and uh, moreover, uh, trees do adapt to constrained environments. Um, in particular, um, you'll find that oak trees are adapted to slopes. Um, and a lean on its own does not indicate that a tree is unstable. Uh, there were no signs of a sudden lean, like loose or lifting soil, which would be a cause for concern. Yeah. So, structure damage, um, as defined in the tree protection ordinance, applies to main structures only, and that would include the house. The finding does not apply to walkways, retaining walls, or fences as these are features that could reasonably be modified or replaced to preserve a protected tree. So a new retaining wall made from a more durable material would protect the house and the tree. Uh, and here's a photo of um, the retaining wall that's there now. Um, and you can see that um, much of the wood is, rot is rotted away. Um, so a short retaining wall, um, similar to this, could be reconstructed. Uh, the existing 4x4 four four post can be drilled out, um, and new posts or even pipe could be reinstalled. And um, pressure-treated wood panels can replace the rotted wood members. So with that, staff recommends that the Planning Commission adopt a resolution denying the appeal and upholding the director's denial of a tree removal permit. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Daz. Uh, is there any questions for staff? I have a question. What does um, uh, who's responsible when there's a tree that grows um, larger and larger and then basically is located along neighboring property lines? Uh, well, we it was determined that the trunk was located on that property, and um, I mean the the property owner also took it upon himself to submit the application. Okay, thank you. So, to, oh, pardon, uh, go ahead. Sorry, guys, if, if I may um, tell, like the problem is the tree is so oh, close. Sir, so sir, the public could, hearing's not open. I'm sorry, sir, if you could just wait one second. We're just asking oh. questions from staff, then we'll start the public hearing and give you, give you plenty of time. So okay. this is questions for staff by our commissioners, sorry. Okay. Commissioner Bookbinder, go ahead. Sure. Uh, just so to make sure I understand this, um, if this tree were causing damage to the main structure, it would be valid to remove the tree. But given that it's causing damage only to accessory things like a retaining wall and so forth, we judge that it's entirely possible and reasonable to replace that in such a way that this won't be a problem in the medium term. The, um, the tree protection ordinance has a specific definition for what constitutes structure damage and what would be uh, looked at as part of structure damage. And it's um, the main home, um, I think accessory buildings that are over 200 square feet in size, um, and I think swimming pools. Okay, uh, and it just, just to, this piece, this was in the staff report it sounds like um, staff judges that it's reasonable for the applicant to, or pardon me, appellant to um, 
to repair this, that it's not an exactly an undue hardship to repair or replace the retaining wall and the fence. Correct. Um, okay. Yeah, the, I mean, the retaining wall does need repair and um, it could be replaced in a way to save the tree. Any, any more questions for staff, anybody? I know that um, it's definitely within Campbell, um, especially given your map, but, um, and we can ask the applicant, but there was reference of a Los Gatos, but I think that was just, that has no bearing on this, right? Um, it's near the border with Los Gatos, but it okay. is located within Campbell's jurisdiction. Great, thank you. Okay, with that, then we can, uh, well, let's open up the public hearing. And I know that the uh, the appellant, Mr. Servistava, wants to speak. So please, uh, please go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the point I was saying, guys, is if you look at the, one of the pictures which was shared is there's probably like three or feet, four feet of gap, right? And I did call, um, uh, you know, the, the retaining wall person to kind of take a look at it. If we do extend, there will be hardly any space for us to walk through that, right? So the tree, when we started, and I actually had my own slides, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to present. But uh, when we started in 2015, when we we, we looked at it, um, and when we moved into the house, um, it was all perfect, right? It was, the, the wood was there, um, the rating was, was perfectly straight. But in five years, it's just, the, the tree moved, and now it's like bashed out the whole thing, right? So think, I can put a wall, I can definitely put a like a, even a cement wall, but it will hardly ha have any space for us to walk through this, right? Um, so the question is, is is there any way if I can put some this like a similar tree somewhere else in my property? And and also like the fences, right? It's, you know, when, when I call the person to take a look at it, they said like, I can put it, but it's the roots are gonna grow. The fences between the three, as you saw, it's in exactly the intersection of three fences and all the fences are all crumpled up. He says, I, there's no way they have to cut to the roots to put the fences back, right? But this, it's going to grow. It's a young tree. It's going to grow again, right? Um, and if you don't mind, I can share, but I'm not so sure what the procedure is, but I can share you the, the five years ago picture versus now, right? So that's my fear, right? And it's so close to the house. You can share your screen if it's okay with the chair. Sure. Perfectly fine. Yeah, you can share it. Any, any, really appreciate any information. That. Um, and uh, I don't know. Um, Okay, so I have to probably fix something on my computer to make that happen, but uh, seems like I can't share it. Uh, anyway, so that's uh, that's uh, that's what I, I feel that uh, you know I, I wouldn't have appealed uh, if I could if it was far away and I could put a retaining wall. It's just so close to the tree and it's right you know uh, and leaning towards it that I just feel it uncomfortable, right? Um, and also like the, the, with the lean, the fence has to, the, the retaining wall has to come very close to the house, right? Is it possible? Is there, um, were yes. you gonna share something then? Yeah, I was trying to share, um, but I have to change something in the preferences guys because of the Zoom thing. Um, well, is so, it on our end or is it on your end? I'm, maybe somebody it's else- It's on my end. Can Cecil give him permission to share? Yeah, he, he currently does have permission. To... He's got permission. It's you can't get it up on it. Thank you. I'll give me one second. Um, sorry, give me one second. Sure. Let me try now if I can share, sorry. Um, here. Oh, perfect, I can. So can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah, we can see something there, sure. Yeah. Okay, great, great, great. So let me actually, yeah, so 
again, as I said, like like uh, Naz was telling about, right? Uh, it stays very close um, and so forth. So this is so this I want to kind of show here that if you look at in 2015 when we're looking at it, you know the, uh, there was a barely a kind of a crack as we see, right? But now uh, you know this is like almost a couple of months ago the picture I took, right? Again. The crack is just it's just widening up, right? And uh, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, one of the things which I want to want to do is like understand why this is, right? And so I called this guy up, and he said like, hey, you know, it's going to grow the, the roots of this tree, um, and it's a massive tree, and, and it's grow, by the way, it's going to grow wider, right? It's, he said it's a young tree. I'm not a tree expert, but he said it's going to grow, and the roots are going to jettison out. I said, fine, that's that's something. Um, and the other thing is, this is five years ago, guys, right? And so if you look at it. Yes, the wall has been there for like 10 years. The, the owners which I bought, they said like they had it when they bought it, right? So I would probably say like 10, 15 years, right? Um, the wood is this, right? In five years, this became the condition. And look at the trunk of the tree five years ago, right? Again, this is, I, I'm, in no case, I'm a tree expert, right? But when I look at it, this this gives me a little bit of a, of a shivers, right? If it's gonna grow, then how much can I put? And if I, if I put a wall here straight away, and that was the guy was trying to explain me that can you pass through? Probably, but it's just going to reduce too much of space, right? So the question for uh, for you guys is: like, Is it worth it doing that, right? Um, so, anyways, I'll rest my case. Um, you know, I'm just trying to as a homeowner, I'm trying to see what's more reasonable, right? Um, and the other thing which I feel is with the whole fire things going on, right? what I heard, and again, did my research sometime back, like there's something called a defensible zone people try to create so that the trees are not so close, right? But I understand fire probably will never come to our area. So those are a few concerns I have, right? Is it, you know, can I do it? Probably yes, but it's just too close. Anyways. Can, you, can I ask you a question? Um, what is the, um, the width of that retaining wall between, or like what should it be if it wasn't protruding because of the tree? Is it like two feet or? Oh, it's a three feet wall uh, okay. from the height wise. Well, no, the width from the edge to the fence. Oh, like from the this thing? I would say it's probably like a feet of this width from the fence to this. This, um, this and distance the, right here? Yes, well, okay. I'm, I'm assuming it's, it's probably a feet, to be honest. I have to go and check, but probably it will be a feet, like a, like probably like a hand. Because I can't grow anything here. Um, I, if you see, I put little potted plants here, which probably never happened. So I would say like little, like around this much, little, little less than a feet of space. And this tree less, grows less right. Than a, less than a foot, sorry. It's hard for me to tell how wide your hands are on Zoom. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I would say less than a foot. Sorry. Less than a yeah. foot. Yeah. Okay. And this is one property, by the way. And the property is, if you see, there's another fence right behind the tree. This tree just sits in the intersection of three properties. Uh, I don't know if, if photos is any clearer. Let me see if there's a but Yeah, so there's another view of it on this side of the house, right? So this is on the left-hand side picture, you see, so this is one property. And behind this is another property. Are there any other trees in that retaining wall or plants, or is that the only tree? This is the only one. Okay. I have a follow-up question. Uh, Maggie, are you, uh, Vice Chair, are you finished? Oh, go ahead, please. Um, what, um, what is the retaining wall's purpose? Is it holding back the neighboring lot? Is the neighboring lot three feet above yours? Or it was more of a planter? What's the purpose of that original retaining space? Correct, yeah. So the, the neighboring lot is three feet above us. So it holds the, the ground. Or, or the soil. In, in your investigation, so looking at the photo here on the screen, um, where are the roots in relation to the soil surface? So right now the soil surface is three feet above, you know, your walkway. Where, if you put, dig your hands in there, are there roots or like what have you e explored what's around that? Yeah, so I, well, I try to dig. It seems like it's kind of a trunk going all the way in. And again, that's what I felt like. It's still like the trunk, like um, the continuation of a trunk. It's I don't feel it's kind of a, the roots are not oozing out of it. I could see roots more, to be honest, on this side. 
I'm not sure it's very clear, but I can see, you know, the uh, the veins of the roots are the way coming out of on this side of the, this side seems more like a trunk growing inside. Um, I don't know if I can explain it, I, if I explain it better. That's, I think that's kind of what I was getting at. I'm just yeah, not sure what's there. So the, the I wall- I more root here, by the way. Um, well, yeah, let, side, let me carry on with that. So if, is the wall actually holding up the tree or if the wall was gone, it would just still be a tree there? Or what was your your expert or your um, the person you hired to come look at it? What was their feeling? He says that if I like, if the retaining wall, so retaining wall has to be there because, you know, of course, uh, you know, it's a, um, it's a neighbor lot, right? Between okay. us and the neighbor, neighbor lot is like, imagine like three feet above us. Got it. Right. And so, okay. So one neighbor lot is three feet above us. The other neighbor lot is two feet below us. It's like a step if you, if you can imagine, right? So this retaining wall is holding one neighbor's um, land uh, like that way, right? So, I mean, I have to put this regardless, right? And that's why I'm saying like, you have to replace the retaining wall, right? And um, the tree will just complicate it more because it's going to grow. Plus, it, um, I don't know if it's not very clear, but then he has like, it has to go vertical, right? So he says like, you'll have to move it more towards your property, the retaining wall. So that you you can accommodate the tree. Okay, thank you. It cannot grow in the. They cannot make the retaining wall in the same place because this because the tree has grown, right? So he said, like, it has to go more inside, so that uh, the retaining wall couldn't grow. It can stay there and be useful. That's actually wedging more into my property. Uh, Chair, can I ask a question of sure. staff yeah. to clarify something? Oh, I guess yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, so if this tree were um, blocking the path entirely or had, you know, destroyed the path and made it impossible to get around the house in that direction, would that be like just in, in the extreme, would that be a, um, a valid reason to remove the tree? Um, well, I can pull up the required findings. Right. I don't know if uh, Wait, I'll, I'll that, jump in. So yeah. the, the, there needs to be adequate access around a, a, a structure in order to uh, have fire service. Um, if they can go around one side or go around the other and have a hose length of 150 to 200 feet, then there is no safety issue. They, they don't have to go around this corner. The thing that's important to note, and, and the appellant mentioned it, the, the, the tree, if anything, and, and I speak with experience working in the cities of Del Mar, Sausalito, Saratoga, you know, heavily tree uh, sloping terrains. The tree is probably stabilizing the moving hillside that's creating the obstruction of, of his cracked uh, sidewalk. Um, he's going to have to remove and replace that retaining wall anyway, or he's going to have a geologic issue. The, the tree is really kind of secondary, but if anything, it's adapted to that area and its root structure is kind of creating a natural retaining wall. So, you know, when we look at the tree preservation ordinance, the very term of the ordinance is to preserve do whatever we possibly can to preserve. Eventually a tree, true, will outgrow its space, but you know it can also adapt to its confined conditions and those confined conditions will slow its growth. It's not, if it was just wide open and, and totally unobstructed, it, it would have more freedom to grow. It, it doesn't. In fact, its roots are probably going the other way, uh, not, not towards the house, you know, the, the base of that tree is right on the soil and usually from there roots spread out. Well, the roots are going straight down on his side. They're probably going lateral on the other side. So really what's probably happening here more is geologic than tree damage. Just, just saying with working in hillside communities. Any more questions for the, uh, for the applicant? Um, one more. Uh, just just to be clear, 
Um, you stated you have a concern that the roots are going to damage the house or that the tree is going to, is in danger of falling on the house. But there's, um, that you haven't, there's no professional opinion saying that that's the case thus far. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Okay. I think this, again, professional, like, you know, um, consulting with uh, um, the uh, the person who uh, I called up to, to make the retaining wall, right? Because I invited him just to get to look at the retaining wall, um, but not from uh, uh, like, a, like a professional, uh, arborist or like you would call it like a person who looks at the trees and then so forth right okay thank you i was trying to get my retaining wall fixed right and based on the city's recommendation saying hey can i actually make it in such a way that it holds it right and he said uh, technically if you pay me i can do anything you want right but in his recommendation based on the retaining walls he makes he's like it was better to get you know it removed because it's just going to in four five years it's going to expand and create you know, similar problems again, right? Okay, thank you. Um, just thank one you last anymore? question yeah, for Naz. Sure. Um, Naz, sure. you said there was some something on the other side that was blocking the light and and um, and creating the um, angle in the tree, creating it to grow in the other direction. What what's well, on the other side? Well, just the fact that it's located between a fence and a wall, the building wall, both of which are going to block light. So a lot of times you'll see um, when a tree is trying to find light, it will kind of reach in a certain direction and just develop that way. Um, something that develops over time um, is fairly common. Um, mm -hmm. Something that was suddenly leaning, that would be a, you know, sign that it there is something wrong and that it's in danger of falling. But um, sometimes, maybe even prevailing winds can cause trees to lean. But um, that's a condition that they can adapt to and sometimes just develop naturally. Okay. And I take it a professional arborist report would be able to like distinguish this tree is in danger of falling versus this tree is not in danger of falling. Yes, I mean an arborist would. Um, have better expertise to determine you know, what kinds of condition the tree is. And um, they okay. would look at the lean, they would look at the, um, you know, the soil, the, the root structure as, as much as they could and they could make a recommendation. Thank you. Any more questions for the applicant, anybody? Uh, is there anybody else who wishes to speak on this item? I, it doesn't look like it, but anybody else want to speak on item one? It's a notation that Lynn Lampros has raised hand. Yes. Oh, I don't see it. On the bottom of my screen. So Cecil, uh, I, don't, I don't know technically what we do. <laughs> yeah, but it looks like it's Lynn and oh, I'm opening up. She, she can't speak. Uh, if she likes. Yes, Ms. Lampos, you, you want to speak? Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, that's good. Oh, great. Um, thank you. I don't know if you, do you need to see a live screen or do you not care? No, no, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you very much for hearing me. Um, commissioners, I appreciate that you, all the care you've already given this matter. Uh, I am the neighbor directly across the street from Nitten and Manal, uh, who live there with their two children. And I, I wanted to give you my opinion on this. Um, I am I'm in favor of Nitten's application to remove this tree. Um, I've looked at the property. This is my neighborhood. I've, I've looked at it from afar and up close. And in my humble opinion, this tree has simply outgrown its location. It is, this is, you know, an oak tree that is crammed in a space that is inches wide. Uh, definitely, my guess it was less than a foot. Uh, jammed up against the two neighboring houses fence lines in a tiny little retaining, crowded in the tiny little retaining wall corner. This is not the place where we would imagine um, wanting to preserve a tree that's going to, you know, continue to grow bigger and bigger and provide 
you know, shade and beauty and all those kinds of reasons we want to preserve trees. Um, this looks like a volunteer that is out of place and is, if not causing foundational problems now, I don't know, but it certainly um, doesn't lend any beauty and it, it, it has outgrown its location. There are other trees right around it on the various neighboring properties and on Nitten's property that provide a lot of canopy right up against it uh, because of their size. So in terms of visually and tree canopy, um, this area would not be robbed of beauty if that one tree was gone. And I know that the, the uh, goal always of our cities, our beautiful cities is to preserve trees, but sometimes that preservation is better achieved with the planting of a, of a tree on another part of the property or in a contribution to an in lieu fund and planting a, a majestic tree in, in a place that's better suited for it. Um, it you know, it's, it may, I don't know what it, if, it certainly is affecting the retaining wall and the, and the um, fences. And I don't know that we need to make a homeowner have to every five years fix fences and retaining walls for this burgeoning tree and eventually whittle away at the passageway around the back corner of his house. Um, it just doesn't, it doesn't fit. Uh, this tree doesn't fit there. And I love trees and I'm sorry to say it, but it, it does not fit there and it doesn't add anything um, to, to Nitten's yard and it doesn't add anything to the neighborhood again because, it, you know, it's, it's one of, of a number of trees right in that area. This, this family is not trying to remove this tree to build a mega mansion or a pool or, you know, anything too self-serving. Um, it just uh, it looks like a continuing headache that with little return for the family or the neighbors. And I don't think that the two immediately adjacent neighbors want their fences constantly uh, impacted by this tree either. So uh, for those reasons, I support Nitten's application and, and appeal and um, say on behalf of uh, myself, I don't object to this removal, but I certainly do appreciate the thoughtful, caring questions that the commission has asked of staff and appellant. And thank you again for listening to me. Thank you for your input. That's very helpful and very good. Uh, is there anybody else that wishes to speak on this item? I don't think there's anybody else. Okay, with nobody else, no other speakers, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for discussion. And uh, anybody want to lead us off? I'll go ahead and start. So um, I love trees and I think that our tree preservation ordinance in Campbell is very important. And this is really a, t a tough one. Um, but I think looking at the situation and where the tree is located on the property and the fact that it's, um, you know, decided a little squirrel many years ago placed um, a seed or an acorn there and it started to grow and grow. And um, if it wasn't for the fact that it was, uh, you know, there's two things here. It's, it's in this very narrow retaining wall and it's also um, at the junction of three fences and three neighbors. So because of those two things, I think it, it's pretty um, difficult to imagine success for this, um, this tree and the whole situation. If it was one thing, if it was maybe in um, a wide-ish retaining wall that wasn't right next to the house, um, or if it was, and, and not right next to the fence, or if it was on a property line, but not on a retaining wall, I think it would be easier to support um, keeping the tree, but because of those two conditions, well, three actually, the retaining wall, the fence, and how close it is to the house, um, it makes it um, a challenge. And because of that, even if um, the applicant was to rebuild the retaining wall, it would, um, and, the, and the fence, kind of getting back to my very original question, the fence would have to be built um, to butt up against that tree, which then means it would have to be kind of modified regularly or every, you know, however many years as that tree grew. Otherwise, it would just continue to impact the fence and the retaining wall. Um, so because of that, um, I would support the um, applicant's request to remove the tree. And then, of course, replant the tree 
a tree or several trees, depending on what the um, tree removal and replacement ordinance uh, stipulates. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I'll uh, jump in. <clears throat> Uh, it's clearly a, a very inconveniently located tree, um, but they sometimes, you know, aren't conveniently located. And we don't have provisions for replacing trees, which are causing specifically not st structure endangering, but still significant damage. Um, that's intentional. We don't have provisions for trees that don't have room to grow that, that uh, will definitely cause problems later on. And that's intentional um, and it looks like from what I can see reading our ordinances and such unless there's evidence that it's definitely causing damage to or endangering the house maintaining it and the nearby walls while really inconvenient it seems to be an obligation of owning property here anybody else Well, I've wrestled, I guess I'll jump in here. I'll just, I've wrestled with this one too. These, you know, these, somehow these tree items are always tough. Uh, but I, you know, I guess when you read our, when you read our, our, our tree ordinance and, and, and Campbell's not unique, it's, it's really, it's fair to say it's pretty stringent. It's pretty tough. We, we really are really trying to save the trees. Uh, so, you kind of come into these situations where you got to get a little subjective and are we, are we being ridiculous as the applicant and a couple of people have said, is it really going overboard? Uh, but I, yeah, like, like uh, Mr. Srivastava, I'm no tree expert either. And I guess I would have to, in this one, defer to our experts saying there is no, you know, the, the tree's fine. There is no danger to the house. Uh, and I guess, and in, 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 again, I always come to try to try to be as fair and even as possible. And it's just that one of that rare cases where you go against our ordinance, pretty close, pretty close, but maybe not quite there. So I, I probably would lean, uh, lean toward, uh, you know, not favoring the uh, the appellant on this one, just just for those reasons. And I, you know, I know that we're, I know it's a tough situation though, but that's my two cents. Anybody else? I, I too am torn. I agree. This is tricky because it doesn't meet the essence of the, you know, uh, actually, Nas, while I'm speaking, could you bring up the findings, the requirements for findings for remo removal to make sure I'm up to speed on those? Um, I do feel that the tree will continue to grow and continue to present problems. Um, so I, I'm not sure what the code says about thinking towards the future, or if it doesn't, uh, maybe the city attorney can weigh in on that. Are we meant to think of long-term aspects of this or are only considered in this moment in time? Yeah, you can consider the future in determining if you're, if you're looking at potential economic hardship uh, or uh, loss of use of the property to, to the owner, yes, you can consider what will happen in the future. And I think that, thank you uh, for confirming that. I think that's necessary here because the tree is very close to the home and um, may in the future impact the structure there. So I could see it continuing to lean and start to lean into the house or fall over into the house. Um, I, so I, I do think it has some future danger of falling uh, and that, that failure could cause structure damage I don't believe there's any utility interference, at least that wasn't brought forward. And wasn't there one more like economic? Oh yes, thank you. Um, and then if he has to, the applicant, appellant, excuse me, has to continually rebuild fences and uh, retaining walls every five years, it seems to be the tree, uh, not doubling in size, but adding 20 to 30% in size every five years, then that would cause a hardship. Um, I do feel that the applicant, we, I, he didn't speak to it, but his the packet showed a replanting location um, with the proper size, you know, per code or per the um, ordinance. So I, I'm sort of trying to help make a case for the appellant in the sense that there will be future damage and future repairs that are ongoing. Uh, if he repairs it today, sure, it will be fine for the next two to five years. 
but then I think we'll be back here or we'll hear of the tree having fallen over and causing other damage or harm to the area. Uh, so I, if fellow commissioners understand where I'm going, I, I kind of see the uh, reason to um, side with the appellant's case here. Yeah, I'd just I'll, like to say, I'll, oh. I, I was Go gonna ahead. jump in just in, and say that uh, I absolutely respect everyone's take on this uh, because we love trees and we all love trees equally. Um, I do happen to side, I think, more with Commissioner Rivlin's take sometimes. If you just look at it, uh, gosh, that's uh, <laughs> those pictures paint quite, quite an interesting uh, picture here. If that were my property, I'd, I'd look at this and say, at what at what point, at what point will will they say, okay, you can remove this tree, and how bad must it get um, before before we'll be allowed to do that? So the subjective matter that, that we're we're forced to take here is, is going to be tough on this one, since we all love trees. Um, but you know, just weighing in on, on that one. Sure, sure. If I can jump in. Um, I, I, again, difficult one. I think the community development director is right in um, his conclusions. I don't think it meets the findings um, as laid down in the ordinance. Um, you know, there's, there's not structural damage to the buildings. Uh, maybe you could argue the economic damage in the future, but I, I completely understand why the city um, has type of rejected this um, appeal. Um, however, saying that, um, you know, I, I Vice Chair uh, Ostrowski's comments and uh, Commissioner Rivlin, it, it does seem to be in the wrong place and looking at the future, um, I can anticipate further problems. So, you know, I, I'm a big tree fan. Um, so it type of pains me to 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 type of lean towards that's not the wrong word um, the appellant here. What I what I might um, suggest is, in my mind, I don't think this meets the findings. So in some respects, we're giving some leeway to the appellant if we want to go that way, rather than planting one replacement tree. And I think it was indicated this would be planted out in the front. I'd request that we plant two trees of 24 inch box size um, to replace this one tree at, at the front. Yeah, so you something you said um, made me think, um, Commissioner Ching, which is that, you know, there will be a point where the tree will be large enough that it will have to be removed. And if we get that uh, new tree planted sooner in the right spot, then that tree will grow and get bigger rather than being in a situation where we need to remove this tree into the future and then we won't have any new tree already starting to grow. We pretty much know that it's inevitable. Having, having looked at the Google Maps aerial, um, the, I believe the appellant has a side yard in addition to the location he proposed uh, on the front yard. There are a, a few spots where a tree could, you know, suitably have space to, to grow in the to the future. If anything, the front yard's smaller than the side yard, so that could um, also, you know, be a case to put it in the side yard where, I, and I, I'm not necessarily requiring two trees because that's not what's listed, but I, I think I'd want to see the same uh, oak species replaced uh, because the oak is a protected tree and, you know, it's a, a viable and healthy tree in the region. I think that would be an appropriate compromise um, for you know, locating it in his his current yard, it would just be a one to one replacement in my mind. But I'm willing to hear other cases or uh, be flexible there. Yeah, I I, I get what you're saying, uh, Commissioner Rivlin. Um, I think the rationale, rightly or wrongly, for two trees is that in my mind, I don't think this currently meets the criteria for tree removal. Um, you know, per the community development director's recommendations. Um, so in light of that, if, if this was clearly, well, you know, it's damaging the building, then it's replacement on a one-to-one -one basis. But I think it, as we we could potentially give the appellant some leeway here, um, that was the rationale for uh, requesting two trees rather than one. Thanks. I would um, <clears throat> agree with Commissioner Ching. That, like, 
I do recognize that when we think of a tree preservation ordinance, we do not think of what we're seeing in these pictures, which is this tree sort of like wedged into this very, very small box and, and, and leaning out of it and just not very well placed. Although uh, staff did tell us that it's, you know, rather than being a problem with the retaining wall, it is providing some sort of retaining services itself. But given that it doesn't provide um, given that this, this very clearly does not meet the on, on its face criteria, I would definitely want to see more than a one to one replacement. I guess my feeling on that is if I look at the aerial view on Google Maps and I think about a mature oak tree and the, you know, the width of that drip line, I don't see really clearly that there's a lot of space for two large mature or what will be mature at some point in the future trees on that property. Point. Could, uh, we could try a motion. I think we got a general idea. I think if we approve the appeal, we have to uh, continue the item or the staff recommends we continue the item to the next meeting. So the resolution can be returned. So the motion would just have to be pretty clear on number of replacement trees. Yeah, Mr. Chair, if I could just add, if the commission is leaning towards uh, approving, rejecting the director's decision and approving the appeal, then you, you wouldn't make a motion other than just to continue the public hearing open. And then we would return with um, a resolution at your next meeting, which is October 13th, um, to then incorporate what your findings and conditions are. Sure, uh, Mr. Cremoy, but would, would, we would have to stipulate one or two replacement trees or no? Would, would those right. be out? Whatever, exactly, okay. whatever your conditions are, we'll incorporate, but you wouldn't make a motion right now to the, make the decision. Okay. You're, you know, I, I would just, I, I'm getting the sense that there's, there's enough support here. Now it's just a matter of vetting out what the uh, mitigation is. I guess on the one tree versus two tree, if if we don't want to, uh, if we want to go with the appellant on this one, I, I would leave, you know, Vice Chair uh, Ostrowski raises a good point, but I would type of leave that decision down to the community development director because of his expertise on the trees and siting and working with, working with the, uh, the property owner to do it rather than us trying to specify yeah you, you don't want to overplant a site right if, if the site is heavily vegetated adding three or four more trees you got to understand that they're going to grow too right so you got to give them ample space to grow so it could be a hybrid of plant a 24 inch box and paying in luffy i mean you you can do both or or just one or or the other it's up to you hmm. i'm so glad Anybody want to try a question? Could yeah. we, uh, just sorry, quick question. Could we leave it up to the appellant as to whether they want to plant a second tree or a pain and Luffy? Yeah, I think that's a good way to go. Sure, that's good. I think that's a good idea. So okay, we're specifying so one tree plus either one more tree or the 500 in Luffy. Okay, so, I think that's kind of where we're at. If yeah. we want to uh, move to continue the meeting to the next to our next, continue the uh, hearing to our next meeting with uh, with that direction totally to the staff. Uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I was leaning towards one, but it's totally reasonable if the appellant only feels that one tree fits their yard or their personal decision, and then the other would be the in Luffy. I, I support that. You know, if well, it wouldn't make it in the motion, but the idea that we continue the meeting with those findings. Okay, so would I make a motion to continue the um, public hearing and the, provide the guidance to staff that um, at, to support the tree removal application and the conditions would include 
replacing, removing the tree and replacing it with um, a new 24 inch box tree and uh, either another tree or paying the $500 in lieu fee um, at the applicant's discretion. Okay, is that a motion? It yeah. sounds good. It sounds good. <laughs> Just a question that I might have missed. Is the, um, is the public hearing still open? No, closed it. You will need to reopen the public hearing before that yep. motion can be heard. Okay. Otherwise, okay. we have to re-notice this. Okay. Well, well, should we second the motion first, Bill, or how do we do it? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Open okay, the public hearing. Public hearing. Okay. Well, we'll reopen the public. We'll reopen the public hearing. Uh, anybody wish to speak on this again? If not, do we have a second for the motion? Second. Kareem, well, can we have a, a roll call Mr. vote? Please? Mr. Chair, just for clarification, the motion is to continue to the October 13th Planning Commission meeting to return with a resolution reflecting a uh, one tree replacement and a one in lieu fee of $500. Or a, or a second tree, depending on- Or a on second tree. Applicant's okay. discretion. Yeah, that's our motion and seconded. All right, Kareem, can we have a roll call vote, please? Aye. Mr. Ching. Aye. Commissioner Coble. Aye. Commissioner Rivlin. Aye. Vice Chair Ostrowski. Aye. And I'm a no, and uh, so that motion passes, so we'll come back. We'll resume the public hearing uh, at our next meeting, which is October 13th. So thank you very much. And we will move on to our second item on the agenda. And our second item, PLN 2020-48. This is a public hearing to consider the application of Grand Petroleum Inc. for a modification, PLN 2020-48, to a previously approved conditional use permit, UP 78-2, with site and architectural review to allow site and building alterations to an existing gasoline service station, including reconfiguration of the fuel station layout, a new fuel station canopy, new trash enclosure, restriping of parking stalls, installation of new landscaping and accessibility improvements for property located at 1533 West Campbell Avenue. Staff is recommending that this item be deemed statutorily exempt under CEQA. And our project planner is Daniel Fama. Good evening. Let me uh, quickly share my screen here. Okay. All right, so this is a conditional use permit modification for property located at 1533 West Campbell Avenue. This is an approximately 15,000 square foot property located at the northwest corner of West Campbell Avenue and North San Tomas Aquino Road within the C1 neighborhood commercial zoning district. It is currently developed with the uh, central gas service station, which includes the, the gasoline fueling pumps, a smog shop, and a small convenience market. Uh, the station was constructed pursuant to a conditional use permit approved by the Planning Commission in 1978. Uh, here we have the existing site configuration. I can see the existing canopy here shown to be demolished. Uh, here we have the proposed site plan uh, depicting the proposed improvements. Uh, you see the outline of the new fueling canopy uh, as compared to the current configuration, uh, which is squarish and a uh, east-west layout. Uh, this has three pumps that are shown in a north-south layout. You also have a new path, accessible path of travel that connects the public sidewalk uh, through the station to the convenience market into the new accessible parking stall. Uh, there are notations for new landscaping. So this uh, will be modified to include install installation of new plants to replace the existing artificial turf. And the proposal includes construction of a new trash enclosure as well as some restriping of parking spaces. In total, the uh, site will now accommodate six parking spaces which is compliant with the current standards for a uh, a fueling station with convenience market in the, the smog station. In terms of design of uh, the fueling canopy, uh, fairly traditional. It's been designed to match the convenience market. 
uh, with comparable materials and colors. Uh, as noted uh, in previous discussions in the staff reports, anything more significant than this would also require uh, alteration to the convenience marketing and smog shop, uh, which is outside of the scope intended by the applicant. Uh, in conclusion, staff does recommend that the Planning Commission adopt a resolution approving a modification to the previously approved conditional use permit. Uh, making note, however, to the desk item with the revised resolution, um, as noted in the email sent earlier yesterday, uh, one of the findings has been clarified to address the non-conforming smog shop. And with that, I'll take any questions that the commission may have. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that presentation, uh, Daniel. I have one question. <clears throat> um, could you clarify why this is being, uh, what the discretionary aspect of this is being brought before us for? It's it's not a new use or anything, correct? Correct, it's not about use, it's about construction of a new uh, building, the canopy, and the reconfiguration of the site. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? If not, we'll, uh, we'll go to our- I have our one more question. Is there, um, is there any work being done um, underground to the underground storage tanks? Yes, I mean, the work to underground storage tanks isn't technically in the purview of the Planning Commission, but that is what instigated the overall improvement. Um, as uh, the applicant had previously noted, since he was gonna have to tear out those tanks, he figured it's a good time to do some additional improvements to the site. Thanks. Any more questions for staff? If not, let's uh, let's open the public hearing. I, I know the applicant, Mr. Salky, is here. I think to speak to us. So, all yours, Mr. Applicant. Um, yes, uh, my architect Sunny Tam was not uh, emailed a uh, a link to join, but I don't know if it's uh, needed or not. I just want to point that out. Um, as the uh, planner mentioned, I am doing this because I have to replace the tanks. These are single wall tanks that are underground. So as part of this uh, capital expenditure, I decided that you know, it'd be best to uh, make modifications so that it improves the look of the site plus the flow of the site, which is uh, why we are making these rec uh, su suggested changes. Thank you. Any any questions for the applicant? If not, then anybody else wish to speak on this item? I don't think so. Doesn't look like it. So at this point, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for uh, any discussion. Yeah, maybe I, I can lead off. This came up at the uh, SARC review. Oh, I'm sorry. I should ask for SARC for it. Uh, let let uh, Vice Chair uh, Ostrowski uh, maybe. Oh, coffee. thanks, Commissioner Ching. Uh, so yeah, we reviewed this, and um, I think the applicant is trying to improve the flow and um, the function of the of the site based on the fact that he has to replace the underground tanks because of the um, the new laws that are in effect. And um, so I think it's fair to say we were very supportive of that. And um, Overall looks good. The circulation looks good, and we didn't have any concerns at all. Yeah, I'd second that. It, it, it looked good. I don't think we had any concerns, and they they done a circulation chart to see if there's any problems in the reconfiguration, which I understand there wasn't. Anybody else, or should we try a motion? This um, one might be pretty straightforward. Make it clear. This this looks very straightforward. Um, Sark sounds like they. Um, did an appropriately thorough job and this looks like it would be a clear improvement on the existing use of the site and there doesn't seem to be anything amiss or objectionable about the, the design of it. But I, I'd be in support of this. Anybody want to make a motion? All right, I'll make a motion uh, to adopt a resolution approving a modification PLN 2020-48 to a previously approved conditional use permit UP78-2 with site and architectural review to allow site and building alterations to an existing gasoline service station. A second. Second. Commissioner Ching seconded it. 
Jermaine, can we have a roll call, please? Uh, excuse me, and and that was uh, with the uh, desk item. Yes, with the desk yeah. item. At number six item. Okay, um, Commissioner Bookbinder. Aye. Commissioner Ching. Aye. Commissioner Colville. Aye. Commissioner Rivlin. Aye. Vice Chair Ostrowski. Aye. And Chair Cray. Aye. Six zero. So that the passes unanimously and the planning commission action is final unless appealed in writing to the city clerk within 10 calendar days. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll ask the commission, I, we can just jump into our last item or we could take a short break. What is anybody, uh, anybody want a break or should we just go into it? I'm okay to keep going. Five minutes, please. <laughs> it sounds good. Okay. So the, the, the old hand here. <laughs> well, just keep on going or take a break. If, two minutes, please, if I may request. Let's take a chair. five minute break. Five yeah, minutes. Yeah, five yeah. minute break's fine. Five minute break. Thank you.
I think we're all uh, we're all here except Director Kermoyan. I'm here. Oh, there we go. Well, that's, <laughs> Just uh, incognito. <laughs> well, we'll re uh, we'll restart our meeting, and we'll move to our third item on our agenda. PLN 2019-206. This is a public hearing to consider the application of Michael Schwager for a planned development permit, PLN 2019-206, to allow construction of approximately 7,000 square foot single story industrial building, a parking modification permit to allow reduction in the number of required parking stalls, and a variance, PLN 2019-207, to allow retention of existing overhead utility lines for property located at 1055 Florence Way. Staff is recommending that this item be deemed categorically exempt under CEQA and our planner is Daniel Fama again. Thank you again. Let me uh, share my screen. All right, so we have an application for a plan development permit with a parking modification permit and a utility variance to construct an approximately 7,000 square foot uh, light industrial building. The project site is located at uh, 1055 Florence Way, which is at the intersection of Florence and Sunny Oaks Road. Uh, Florence is a private street that functions more as a large driveway uh, for the properties that take access to it. Uh, this is a 17,000 square foot lot located in the PD plan development zoning district and within the light industrial general plan uh, land use district. Uh, the property is currently a vacant parcel that was created out of a larger parcel in May 2012 when the city council approved a plan development permit a zoning change in a lot split to allow construction of a comparable industrial building uh, that was never actually constructed. Um, however, the zoning change and the subdivision to create this parcel uh, did remain in effect. Uh, here we have the site plan of the proposed uh, industrial building. Uh, it's located up against a, a zero setback, which is allowed in the plan development zoning district uh, to maximize the development capacity of the site. Uh, because Florence Way is a private street and again functions more like a driveway, uh, the parking stalls are shown uh, perpendicular to uh, Florence uh, here that allows them to uh, back up into the street, which would not normally be allowed if this were a public street. We have uh, some landscaping planters along the west side of the property that serve for stormwater purposes, uh, new landscaping in the front, new public improvements, a new sidewalk. Uh, the path of travel would lead up a little ramp here to the main entrance. Uh, which is at a slight angle at the intersection corner. In terms of architectural design, uh, the, most of the building is shown in a split face block in alternating shades of gray uh, to give it a, a little flair uh, beyond the standard industrial building. Um, for enhanced appearance, however, at the, uh, at the corner, the entry treatment uh, has uh, been substantially in enhanced compared to typical industrial development. Uh, with the accentuated vertical entryway, with the angular roof line. Uh, the approach is generally consistent with the general plan's guidance on design, which does encourage a more creative use of building materials and colors, uh, particularly in industrial areas where the city has long to uh, increase the suitability of these areas. In terms of the utility variance, as noted by the applicant's um, undergrounding utility examination, Unfortunately, to satisfy PG&E requirements to underground the existing utilities that run uh, parallel with the property would require installation of two new poles and reconfiguration of electrical service for properties that are served by those two poles, which largely defeats the whole point of actually undergrounding uh, those utility lines. And as the commission has seen with other applications, uh, the applicant is requesting a variance to allow retention of those utility lines. In terms of parking, the application does include a parking modification request to reduce the required amount of parking from 18 stalls to 15 stalls. 
Um, as is required by the city's parking and loading ordinance, a parking modification permit requires the applicant to provide materials or information that substantiate their requested parking reduction. Uh, as noted in the staff report, uh, the applicant has provided a statement uh, making their case for the reduction, specifically that it is uh, warranted because of proximity to public transportation and uh, bicycle facilities, uh, such as the Los Gatos Creek Trail, um, of course, uh, general plan policy uh, that encourages alternative forms of transportation. And they also do note that the building would incorporate uh, indoor bicycle parking. Um, as a point of reference, staff also did identify that the Institute of Transportation Engineers, the ITE uh, parking generation guide does have a notably uh, lesser parking standard than the city standard uh, that would be within the range of five or seven stalls compared to 18 for the city's parking standard. Um, largely supporting that there's probably some differential between what the city generally requires and what um, the traffic engineering may actually support. However, it's also good to keep in mind, however, that generally a lot of developers will try to minimize the amount of parking required so that they can maximize buildable area and sale land value as well as uh, leasable rates. But oftentimes staff sees that tenants tend to want more parking than is actually built. So there often is a conflict. And because of that, uh, although staff is recommending an approval of the project, uh, there is a condition of approval that would restrict the allowable land uses to those that are generally uh, less impactful from a parking perspective, uh, specifically manufacturing and warehousing. Uh, this, however, would allow the applicant to use the building uh, they are a contractor with their headquarters in San Jose, and they have expressed interest in using this building as a satellite location. So the land use restriction would allow the building to be used uh, for contractors storage and um, material warehousing. In conclusion, staff does recommend that the Planning Commission adopt a resolution recommending that the City Council approve a plan development permit with the parking modification and another resolution recommending that the City Council approve the utility variance. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, any questions for Daniel? I have a question. Um, so it sounds like neither PG&E nor the applicant are interested in undergrounding the lines. What's the requirement there that uh, we're granting a variance against? Like, Where's the requirement in the first place coming from? Sure, the requirement is coming from the city zoning code. Um, when the city's general plan was adopted, there was a policy language to try to minimize the amount of overhead utility lines. Unfortunately, after the San Bruno uh, accident disaster, PG&E became much more restrictive in their, in their use of existing utility poles to serve as both overhead and underground service. So what we found is to actually replace existing utility lines that run across a property requires installation of more poles. And um, that tends to be unattractive and really goes against the idea of what the city is trying to achieve is to reduce the number of poles and utility lines. Thank you, that, that explains that really well. Um, and, and just to be clear, um, you mentioned that there's indoor, um, because they're relying on bicycle access. You mentioned that there is indoor bike parking. How many uh, uh, bike stalls are there? I, didn't see it in the presentation. I may have missed it. Let's see if I can see it on the application materials. You don't have to. You don't have to look it up. This is, um, we can ask the applicant. And I'm sure well, it I looks like it. so they've designated uh, seven air seven spaces for bicycle, scooter, or mo mo motorcycle parking. And they also do include an indoor shower so that uh, to accommodate uh, any employees that may want a bicycle to work. Sorry, when you say seven spaces, that's seven car size parking spaces that would accommodate some large, some number of bikes and scooters greater than seven, or is that space for seven bikes or scooters? I believe it's seven bikes or scooters, but the applicant can probably speak to that more. Okay, well, 123 has the uh, bike parking. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, that, that's my questions. Any other questions for staff? Uh, Daniel, I have just uh, two, just to follow up real quick on uh, Commissioner Bookbinder's question. So, so the variance for the utility lines, uh, and you even mentioned it, I think, when you were talking, so that 
it's, it, that's fairly typical. In other words, that's happening a lot now. Correct. Because of the PG&E stuff that you just mentioned. Correct. Okay. My other question is just, I, I don't know that area too well, but have there been, I don't know how you'd quantify it, have there been parking issues in that area at all? Well, I mean, I would say that, I mean, if you drive out there, I mean, there clearly is uh, parking challenges. A lot of those buildings um, have been built quite a long time ago, and there does tend to be a lot of spillover onto the public street. I mean, but we don't really get complaints, but it's probably such a long existing condition that people don't even think of complaining. Okay, all right, that's fine. Uh, any other questions for staff? I, I have a question about Florence Way. Maybe it's not important, but I'm just curious what happens. Are they part of the private HOA that relates to Florence Way? Uh, or what if Florence Way disappears? Do they, how do they get their cars in and out? I believe Florence Way is, um, as compared to a lot of contemporary subdivisions where a private street is its own separate parcel and there's a homeowners association that manages it, uh, older private streets tend to be easements upon the actual private parcels, which is the case here. So all these parcels that run alongside it are encumbered with this easement. And since they all take access to it, I, I should think it would be challenging for it to ever go away any new development would need to respect it in the manner that's being proposed here. Great. I, yeah, I just wanted to understand how that works. Thanks. Sure. Any other questions for staff? I, I Did the SARC look at this item? I think so. They did. So we probably should have a start report now and then we'll open yeah, up. Yeah, so uh, we were in favor of this um, application actually, um, specifically the over power lines. Um, you know, makes a lot of sense to not add poles and um, kind of defeat the purpose of undergrounding the utilities if you're gonna add two extra poles. Um, we were also in favor of the parking modification permit because of the fact that it is so close to public transit, as well as the fact that there are showers located in the building, which is, you know, not, not common for that type of space. Um, and the fact that it was also going to be used as kind of a satellite office for the business. Good. Very good. Thank you. Uh, at this point, then we will uh, we'll open up the public hearing. And I know the applicant, uh, Mr. Schwager, is here to speak to us. So please go ahead. Sounds good. Well, thank you. Um, I'm going to keep this pretty brief because Daniel did an excellent job introducing the project. But I thought I'd... Uh, touch on the parking modification portion. So let me try to share my screen here. Can everybody see the screen? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> so yeah, again, I just want to touch on the parking modification portion. Um, I'm going to keep this pretty brief. Um, just to do a little introduction, if you guys don't know who we are, um, we're a family owned company. We've been in the Bay Area for about 45 years. Um, and I bring this up because we may be, end up being the uh, an owner occupant here. Um, we're a general contractor, engineering contractor. Primary business is bridge construction where we do post tensioning and stay cables across the nation. And we also do structural retrofits in the Bay Area. We obviously also do some commercial real estate and we also have a transportation division where we design and build automated people mover systems. So we're, we're very aware of the importance of having adequate parking for a, a development. Um, and we're also very um, aware of the challenge of that last mile for public transit. So when we found this site, we were pretty excited about its location due to its proximity not only to the highway, Highway 17, but also to all the other forms of public transit. Um, obviously, we're very close to the Creek Trail, but we're also close to three bus stops and light rail. If you look at that last mile radius, we're well within inside that mile radius, but nowadays nobody really wants to walk a mile, so we typically look at the half mile radius. And now, I mean, that half mile radius is what people will walk, but 
nowadays with the addition of Uber and Lyft and the, the e-bikes and the e-scooters, these, these circles are getting larger and larger. So if you look at the half mile radius to all the bus stops, you can see we'll, we're well within these half mile radius. But what really excited me was the proximity to the Creek Trail. I'm an avid cyclist and um, not only the Creek Trail, uh, this is the, the Campbell citywide bike map that we pulled um, from the website. If you zoom in, you can really see our proximity. We're not only close to the Creek Trail, about 600 feet, but we're also 500 feet from a bike lane and 800 feet from a bike route. So we're really sandwiched in between all these bike routes that the city has designated that we want to develop and, and keep them as, as cycling paths. But what does that all mean if you get to work and you don't have a place to put your bike and you're all sweaty? I mean, I, I ride my bike to work and I need to keep my bike in my office and I don't have a shower and I know the challenges that come along with it. It, it really doesn't um, promote other forms of transportation. It doesn't promote cycling to work if you don't have the right facility. So not only are we gonna be adding the required um, parking out front for bicycles, we're also planning to install bicycle, scooter, motorcycle parking indoors. Um, and of course, adding the shower um, for the benefit of our, our colleagues. This right here also shows our, our parking layout. Daniel also showed a similar drawing. You can see it's not a, a conventional parking lot where you have the building out front and you, you try to sandwich all the, the parking in the back. We do have a very wide um, private driveway at Florence, which is an easement 20 feet on each side. So you have plenty of room to get your car in. Um, and you can see we really try to maximize this as much as possible. Back in 2012, when this uh, was approved by the Planning Commission, I think there was only 12 stalls. We were able to squeeze in three more by reconfiguring the trash enclosure and taking away one of the roll-up doors to add uh, more parking spaces in the middle. Um, so really you can see this isn't a, hey, you can make the building a little bit smaller and add spots. You really would completely reconfigure the building and it really wouldn't be economically feasible to, to do it any other way. We can't really fit any more stalls anywhere. So we're really maxed out at, at the 15 stalls that we've provided here. Oh. Sorry. So what's the justification for the parking modification? We're close to public transit. Uh, the last miles become shorter and shorter due to the increased use of bikes, shared scooters, e-bikes, e-skateboards, and of course the Ubers and the Lyfts. Uh, alternate forms of commuting are increasing popu in popularity, reducing the need for parking. And I don't know how many millennials I've talked to that either don't own a car or don't ever plan on owning a car. So these things are changing and they're changing faster and faster. And also, I think Daniel mentioned, yeah, the Institute of uh, Transportation Engineers. If you go by their guidelines, we would need about five to seven stalls and we're providing 15 stalls. And also, if you look at the surrounding cities, I know every city has, has their reasons for their parking requirements, but comparable cities around also have, uh, they would, 15 would, would work in almost every surrounding city about the same size. Um, but most importantly, we plan on in, uh, occupying this building. We have three very, very similar buildings in San Jose, occupy all three of them, and if we occupy this building, we, we calculate that we'd need about six stalls. And again, that's, that's straight from what we use at our current facilities. We have three parking lots and most of them are half full. Um, so with that, uh, I would like to thank you for your time and uh, hope that you can, will consider letting us move forward with the project. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions for the, uh, for the applicant? Uh, just to be clear, um, if like the number of parking spaces, if you were entirely apart from the city's regulations, you would probably want to put about six parking spaces in the building. 
Uh, it was originally approved with 12 and there's uh, 15 because that's as many as you could fit in though the city on its face requires 18. That's correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Can't see anybody. I, uh, does anybody else wish to speak on uh, item number three? Oh, there we go. I don't think there was anybody. Any other speakers for item number three? Nobody waving their hand. So I guess at this point we can close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for discussion. So I have a question for staff. Um, do we have a any kind of ordinance in which if you have a building that requires X amount of parking, you can take a certain portion of that and substitute it with bike parking? So I know you can do that in some places. Uh, do we have that here? No, I'm afraid not. Okay. Anybody else? I, I guess I'll just say, uh, I think the project looks nice. It's very, very nice. I think the parking and the utilities are the only issues. And the uh, utility is pretty well explained and the parking, I, you, anybody who's been there, you know that it is a, you know, I haven't been there too often, but it's a congested area. So I, it's always a tough issue, but uh, I love the fact that they have the showers inside and I am certainly in favor of the biking and uh, this might be an area to, to give them a break. But uh, so I think the project looks pretty good. Yeah, I, my, my quick comments on there. Um, likewise, uh, I was on the SARC. I, I think it's great development. Um, and since uh, Commissioner Hines is no longer with us, <laughs> I'll just thank the applicant for the investment in, in Campbell. Uh, I think it's a nice contemporary design and, and obviously will be an upgrade to, um, to, to the area. So it, it gets my support, the, both the parking and the um, uh, power lines uh, understandable and um, I, I think it's a good thing. Anybody I'll else? Concur, uh, I'll, I'll concur with Commissioner Ching here. Um, I'd like to also thank the applicant for uh, bringing their business to Campbell. Um, as an industrial building, this I think this is a particularly nice looking building. I like what they've done with the entryway and trying to ornament the um, stone used on the outside so that it actually has a bit of I think the word was flair to it. Um, I very much appreciate the use of um, in the provision of indoor bike lockers. And I believe the diagram had two outdoor bike spaces as well. The provision of, of bike lockers and a shower. I, I think that shows the applicant is actually serious about wanting to take advantage of the nearby bike infrastructure, which I think is wonderful. Um, yeah, I, I see no reason to... Um, not to uh, agree to this. I'm supportive of recommending this to city council. I, I think they addressed the parking issue adequately and it seemed to have been passed or uh, provide less parking before. So I think that's um, good that I know it had lapsed, but that's a good improvement. And the building uh, seems to suit that area uh, and have extra architectural uh, design and flair is Commissioner Bookbinder mentioned. So I'm supportive of a motion that would recommend this to the city council. Should we try a motion, anybody? Uh, Mr. Chair, if, if I could just uh, clarify one point, not, it, not sure. that I don't think it's gonna sway your decision because staff supports it, but the building that was approved before was actually lesser square footage though. It wasn't the same size building with fewer parking stalls. It was a smaller building with code conforming parking. So I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, thank you, Director Kamorian. That's a good point. Shall I uh, move to make a motion? Sure. Okay, so I move to make a motion to adopt the resolution, uh, brackets reference attachment one recommending that the city council approve a planned development permit with a parking uh, modification permit to allow construction or allow construction of a 7,200 square foot single story industrial building 
and to adopt a resolution reference attachment two, recommending that City Council approve a variance to allow retention of existing overhead utility lines. Have a second. I'll second. Commissioner Bookbinder seconded it. Uh, Corrine, can we have a, a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Bookbinder. Aye. Commissioner Ching. Aye. Commissioner Colville. Aye. Commissioner Rivlin. Aye. Vice Chair Ostrowski. Aye. Chair Cray. Aye. It's zero. No. So that passes unanimously. And the item now goes to the city council. And it looks like the meeting date is set already at, for October 20th. So congratulations to the applicant. And good luck at city council. Thank you very much. And this good item night. is done. So uh, Director Kermoyan, at this point, is there any uh, report from, uh, from you, updates? Yeah, I wanna give you an update on your uh, recommendation for the zone text amendment on parking. So um, we presented your uh, recommendation to initiate the, the text amendment, just to check in with the council to make certain that they were okay with adding more work on to the planning staff they felt that um, this was not the right time to be considering the zone text amendment. And um, I just wanted to report back to you that we did present it to the council. They, what they wanna do is because the planning commission, um, what I wasn't aware of was the civic improvement commission and the parks and rec uh, commission. They, they also have ideas. So what, that what was happening in the background is the, the council really would want to on a annual basis as part of their work plan preparation creation um, to solicit the more of a comprehensive list of what each body advisory body the historic preservation board the civic improvement commission the planning commission etc uh, solicit from you all what you feel the city could be working on and then the council in a more uniform manner would then consider all the um, work plan if you will request um, at one time rather than you know throughout the year so I, I just wanted to say that your uh, your ideas and observations were appreciated they're not lost by any stretch of the imagination. And what I would suggest is we continue uh, issue identification, uh, identify certain uh, items of interest like the FAR, uh, parking, um, anything else that you have. And then when it comes to, I think it's about January, that's when they begin to have their discussions on work plan priorities for the coming year and then those work plan priorities are then dialed in to the budget preparation because once we assign tasks, there's usually a cost. So I just wanted to report back to you that um, that was their decision. It sounds like they might almost be in favor of some type of, dare I say, joint session. <laughs> <Ask. laughs> Uh, sorry, I had to plug that in there. Sorry, that was uh, well, rhetorical. No, Don't respond. That's the perfect time. <laughs> that is perfect time. It does make sense. I, I think that would be very helpful if they would like to do that around January. It, so, Paul, does this mean that we'd be like submitting some kind of wish list around January? I think what we would do is I would place um, an agenda item when once once I know what their schedule is. I'll agendize um, an item probably beginning of January um, where we can as, as a, as, or, or you can as a commission, we as a team, um, I identify those um, items of importance to you. And then I'm not certain how the mayor will structure the conversation. If it's like a round table or the chair of each body makes their pitch of, of what item, or if it would be at a public hearing. I, I don't know that, um, but I, I think the timing would be beginning of January, beginning of the year. 
Okay, so this will be this will come back to us. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So start thinking of uh, that list of ideas. We we have two, if not three, already. Um, okay. So uh, this will, on, that, yeah. on that note, um, to put things on that list, um, do we need to consent on that? Because I actually have uh, a couple more items for that list. Yeah, um, I would just know. individually, Commissioner <laughs> Chief, individually keep your own list, and then when we agendize it in January, then we'll have a, a more you know fluid conversation where each commissioner would have an opportunity to kind of go through their ideas. So we have the ADU amnesty, we have the FAR interest, we have parking relaxation, and I'm certain there's other things. So then we'll just keep this list going. Okay. All right. um, I'll make sure I maintain, I keep a list for when we talk about this in January. Thank you. Any other questions for the director? If not, let's, uh, and the uh, meeting of uh, plans, Campbell Planning Commission is adjourned till our next meeting, which is October 13th. And everybody stay well until then. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night.